morning. Welcome back to GP Outdoors. Firewood season is fast approaching. I promised you folks I'd give you an update and a review on a lot of the new apparel and different chainsaw gear that I've purchased over the last year. Let's get her done. Let's talk about saws. It's the MS261CM. It's got an 18 inch bar. Picked it up last November. I've used it now for about 10 months through the rainy season in the fall, the bitter cold of February in the winter, and just through the hottest month of the summer here, July. This saw has been outstanding. I've only owned three saws so far. The last one was a steel 251, but this pro grade saw is definitely leaps and bounds above their regular landscape or maintenance type saws. For me here, I don't think I need anything much bigger. It's the only saw I use primarily except for my limbing saw. A number of folks have suggested that in addition to this saw, I get myself a much larger saw to handle some of the big stuff. But in all fairness, 95% or more of what we limb or we buck here is less than 16 or 17 inches in diameter. And this saw gets through it just fine. And for the odd time that we do get a big granddaddy or a, you know, a 26 or a 30 inch trunk, between Husky Bob and Guy, they've got more than enough larger saws to handle the job. So if you're like me and you've got a forest kind of like this, or your property is similar and you do the same similar type things, we probably split about 35 quart of firewood a year between us. I think this saw is a real good performer. To answer a couple of questions, you're absolutely right. I had a number of people that told me that once you get this saw new and you run four or five tanks of gas through it, it seems to become more powerful. And it did. It's really powerful, it's got great torque. A couple other folks had asked me if there was something wrong with the saw because it usually takes about seven to nine pulls to get it to start cold. If it's warm, it'll start up on one pull. I went back to the dealer and talked to them. They've been around a long time. It's because it's a version three and it has that e-tronic or that m-tronic electronic control in the, the engine. That's why it takes so many pulls, but it's consistent. Always seven to nine, starts every time. And once she kicks in, purrs like a kitten right from the minute it starts and it never fails. It doesn't start and stop again like some other saws do. Once it starts, it runs. Very happy with it. I think it was a good value. I have to be honest with you. I've never learned how to sharpen a chainsaw using flat and round files, but I did get one of these about two years ago. It's the still two-in-one sharpener, and I have to say this has become my best friend in the forest. Works really well, does a good job of sharpening not only the cutters, but the rakes. Keeps them at the right distance or height. Really quick and easy to use. And after two years, I still haven't yet have to change these files. Basically, when one starts to get dull, you can open the end up and you can turn the file. But for $41 or 42 bucks, highly recommend you get one of these. About 15 months ago, I was introduced to the Oregon Electric CS300 limbing saw. First time I'd ever used an electric chainsaw. And to be honest, I've never used any other brand. Earlier this year, they sent me this year's version, which is the CS325, which has different and improved chain and bar technology. Definitely cuts much smoother and much more efficiently or effectively than the CS300. However, jury's kind of out right now. One of the things I really love about the CS300 is it has a built-in sharpener. They're both battery opted. They both will give you about an hour's worth of cutting time on that six amp battery. But the nice thing about the 300 is you're out in the forest, she starts to get dull two or three seconds and you're sharp and you're going at it again. The CS325 does not have the self-sharpening feature, but you're, they're basically otherwise on par with each other with the exception of the sharpener. So for me right now, I think if I had to choose, I would definitely stay with the CS300 just for that ease and convenience that when you're out there dropping trees and you're limbing them, you've got a three second sharpen and you just keep working. There's no need to pull out the files or the flat files and start going at the saw. As you folks know, I'm a big fan of steel equipment with the exception of this helmet. As much as I love the saw and a number of other different steel items that I have, this helmet was actually a real letdown. It's what they call their advanced vented helmet. You know, it comes with a full face shield. I believe these are 23 or 20, I think it's 23 or 25 DB ear protection and it's adjustable in the back of the helmet, just like pretty much any other forestry helmet. The challenge with this is, is I don't believe it's very well made. In fact, I just noticed it's come off again. This still advanced vented helmet was about three times the cost of this old Grippo that I've had for years. You folks will remember this. I keep it in the truck now because I primarily keep trying to use the steel. This was about $50. The steel advanced in Canadian funds is about $152, I believe, plus tax. Same kind of design, full face helmet, mesh, steel mesh. You've got your ear protection and similar to the steel, the old Grippo, 
has an adjustable harness inside for your head. But a few of the things which are a bit of a letdown. This old girl's been going for years, and as you can see, other than a little bit of a rip here, I probably have thrown this into the firewood trailer out in the forest, or dropped it on the ground, or kicked it around in the back of the trailer, I don't know, a hundred times or more, and she's still going strong. Nothing's broken on it, everything still works. My steel I've had since I believe January, so I've had it going on eight months now. For some reason, parts just keep coming off it, and I haven't even used it much, to be honest, this year. The harness inside continues to come off in the inside of it. You'll see it's already off again, right here. And although it has a regular harness, and I will say that it has a more absorbent uh, sweat band in the front than the old Grippo does, the trouble is, I think it's made for people with a smaller head than I have. It just doesn't seem to fit properly, and it, the back band doesn't make it under the crown of your skull. So when you're putting it on, you're kind of tightening it around, almost around the side of your skull, as opposed to coming down underneath that, your skull cap. The Grippo has a nice, comfortable fit. It also has an adjustable harness in the back. So when you put it on, you adjust it down and it will catch underneath the back of your skull. Tightens in nice and comfortably. So you can see the harness is still in there after all these years. And so is the shield. The other thing that was unfortunate between these helmets is although this is a full face shield, you can see it's slightly smaller than the Grippo. When you drop this down in front of you, my nose sometimes actually touches the mesh. That's how close to your face it is. So it's not that comfortable, whereas the Grippo tends to come out around your face so it doesn't actually touch the skin or touch your nose either way at the end of the day helmet gets two thumbs down sorry steel but uh, i think you could have done better much better so i know a lot of you have been waiting for this but i had to wait until i got through the heat of summer before i did the review these are my chainsaw pants i picked them up last december so i have used them throughout the cold of the winter and i've now just passed the hottest month of the summer and the most humid month of the summer this is what they call their Function Ergo Pant. They have a number of different pants on their website. This one I think was about $179 Canadian. Protection, I think it's a class one or two protection or class B protection. Basically the front and a little bit on the sides of your leg. Really good pant, very, very comfortable. And let me tell you a few things I like about it. Has a lot of pockets, has three or four pockets on it for putting your wedges or any type of tools. Maybe it's your, your chainsaw tool. Really smart addition, as I'd mentioned before, is in the back of both legs, there's a vent that you can unzip. Super important in the summer, and it works. You go out in July, and you keep those vents closed, and you'll be sweating in no time. You get very hot in them. You open up both of these vents on the legs, and there's a nice rush of cool air that gets inside the pant and cools you down. I wasn't sure how they were gonna be in the July of the summer, but I actually have found them to be just as or less hot than a pair of jeans would be. They're not that bad. I'm not sure what type of material they're made out of, but they're very comfortable on the leg. They don't scratch, they're, it's a comfortable fit. I found in the winter time, I tried them both with long johns on and without. And if you've got long johns on, and of course, like any pair of pants, you've got long johns underneath and you're standing around, you keep warm. But when you're out there working in the forest and you're bucking logs or you're sawing wood and you start working, you don't need the long johns on anymore. They're comfortable and they're warm enough that you don't have to put any underlinings or any other type of underwear on. You're in good shape. A couple of things I would suggest though. I like the fit of the pant and I like the fact that it has an elastic waistband. However, if I was going to buy them again, I would buy one size up because I bought what I would normally buy in a size pant. And although it fits well and the inseam down to the leg is correct, um, might just be that I'm getting older, but the middle section, kind of a little bit, not a lot of room in there. And uh, uh, it's not restricting and it's not uncomfortable. It's just, I like a little looser fit to my pants. One other thing I wish they had done with these pants is you'll see at the top of the zipper, it doesn't have a cross button like a lot of pair of pants do which usually is put in there to help take any strain or stress off the top of the zipper. I have a feeling that over time, I'm gonna end up ripping the outside of the zipper because when you're bending over and you're working, you're constantly pulling and pushing 
and I think it would have been really helpful if they'd put that extra button strapped at the top of the zipper. And lastly, highly recommend you get a pair of suspenders to go with them. They do come with the suspender buttons on them, and I just find personally it's much more comfortable working outdoors when you're wearing suspenders than when you've got a big belt wrapped around your waist. But other than that, I have to say, excellent pair of pants, good for all season, all year long. And I'm really pleased with the comfort as well as the durability of these pants. Still don't have any rips in them. In fact, they still look kind of brand new. Good purchase, I think. My chainsaw boots. These are Mindel Airstream Rock. Now you'll know that I did a video on different types of chainsaw boots. You can get them anywhere from around 180 Canadian up, like upwards to $1,000. This pair of boots cost me just over 500. And before you ask me why I spent so much money on a pair of chainsaw boots, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. I have, uh, for lack of better words, I have funny feet. In fact, my wife's been poking fun at me for 30 years about them. Now you'll tell me, and I know people will say, Gord, everybody has one leg that's longer than the other or one foot that's bigger than the other, but the difference in the sizes of my two feet are noticeable. And in fact, it's always been a challenge buying footwear because I have to find a pair of shoes or a size that's not too constraining on one foot, but not too loose on the other. I have fallen arches, I have wide feet, and let's just say I have uh, funny toes. <laughs> and goodness, my wife loves me just the same. So when I look at footwear, I know that especially if I'm gonna be wearing footwear for hours at a time, I need the comfort. Uh, I don't need the pain that comes with an unsupported foot or very cheap footwear that doesn't have the right arch support or the right support on the sides of the foot. These Mindel boots are excellent. I, I don't have a single bad thing to say about them. It was worth the money for me. Not only do they have a number of different features, I think they're class 21 protected. You've got separate lacing for the front of the foot as well as up the boot. So you can adjust the different pressures on different parts of your foot. But the big thing for me is that the inside of the boot has what they call a gel lining in it. It's not a lining you pull out, it's actually in the boot. When you put your foot into the boot, within a couple of minutes, the gel will form around the shape of your foot. It's got great support and they're incredibly comfortable. I could wear these every day, all day long and not ever feel any discomfort. So these Mindel boots, two thumbs up. And I just recommend if you're doing a lot of chainsaw work, you might wanna consider that protection for your foot. 57, I have all my digits, I have all my limbs and I wanna keep it that way. My chainsaw gloves. Once again, it's that Grippo brand glove. I actually used to sell them on my website. I don't anymore, but I did make sure I kept a couple of pair. These have got to be the best chainsaw gloves I've ever owned. Really nice, soft, but really, really tough hide on them. I think it's pigskin, I'm not sure. The left hand, of course, has ballistic nylon in the back of the hand, chainsaw gloves. And they were, I think about 19 or $20. Unlike the steel gloves that I used to buy and you know, for $40, $45, I never found that the steel gloves had a tough enough hide. You get six, seven uses out of them and you'd already start seeing holes in the fingers. These ones here, I can literally get about two years out of these, which is why I bought a couple extra spare pair and I leave them back at the cottage. Really nice gloves. Not sure where you can find them in North America, but I'm sure if you look it up on the internet, you'll be able to see retailers somewhere throughout North America that sell them. The only negative thing I will say about these gloves is that they don't come in a medium size. You can only order them in large or extra large, and my hands aren't that big. So they're a little bit oversized for what I'd prefer in a pair of gloves, but the protection and the wear and the feel, can't complain. A review of my gear just wouldn't be complete if we didn't take a few minutes to talk about the Logox. It's made by Austin and his family down in the U.S. I've been using it now consistently for about 20 months whenever I'm doing firewood or I'm out in the forest. And I have to tell you, as I've mentioned before on other videos, there was a time when I'd be out in the forest with Guy and Bob and I'd come home and I'd be popping Tylenol or Advil for my back from lifting those rounds. This thing is truly a back saver. It really does work, which is why I still use it every time I go out in the forest. It's funny shaped and it's odd looking but it's actually a very balanced, well-engineered tool. If you're uh, sneaking up there in years like I am and you're having some back troubles or some lower back pains, 
and you love doing firewood, you want to keep doing the things you love. And I just find that this tool has been incredibly helpful for me. If you do decide that you're going to look into one, I'd highly recommend that you pick up the extra holster. Just a lot more handier than throwing it down on the ground every time you don't need it. It kind of defeats the purpose of having to pick things up from ground level. But she hangs well, great at the side of the splitter as you've seen, and great for using in the forest. That's going to wrap it up. Sorry it took so long for the review on that equipment, but as I mentioned before, I like to make sure I get it through several seasons or different types of weather or conditions so I get a chance to really use the equipment and see how it performs under different scenarios. Hopefully it's been helpful for you as you roll into firewood season. Have a wonderful week with your families. Please be kind to each other, and I'll see you again on the next one right here on GP Outdoors. Cheers.